Not a little brothers, our next fugitive grew up wanting to be just like his older sibling. Unfortunately, he did. When Paul Jackson visited his older half-brother Vance Roberts at his home in Hillsboro, authorities say the men did much more than just catch up on old times. You need to open up your arms and take the Lord in. We don't want you to be a prostitute. You can change. You think you're helping me? It's what the Lord wished us to do. Authorities say Roberts and Jackson had abducted a woman off the streets of Portland, holding her captive in a house they had designed for pure horror. It was like a bedroom of torture. There was no way I was getting loose. They told me that they were going to keep me and sell me to a slave trade. Put her away. I gotta go to work. It was just all kinds of sexual abuse and sexual torture. I thought it was sick. I thought they were maybe flowers for my grave. I'm taking you back tonight. I've seen their faces. I'm thinking, really, I'm good. they're going to take me to kill me. Get out. Get the hell out of my car. He pushes me out, and I run. I run like hell because I'm thinking it's a joke. I'm thinking he's going to come back around and get me. Cops say Michelle survived a week of terror, and although she went to police, Michelle had no idea where the house was and no way to ID either Roberts or Jackson. investigation went nowhere, and authorities say once Roberts and Jackson got a taste for this sick behavior, they couldn't stop. In fact, they created a list. It detailed what streets to cruise and what kind of women were on them. Were they heavy or thin? What was their hair color? And most important, were they usually alone? On June 2nd, 1990, cops say the brothers found who they were looking for on the streets of Portland. Oh, there she is again. She's alone. I'm pulling over. How are you doing? You looking for a day? So how about it? Not a cop, are you? No, are you kidding? Why are you letting you hop in? It's getting cold out there. Come on. There we go, girl. Now we're talking. All right, is that better? do you feel better in here? It's warmer. All right. Are you the only one? He only went like two or three blocks away from where he picked me up and pulled over in front of the high school. Let's, let's do this. It's $30. $30, $30, okay. Change of plan. Get the back with me. He had a stun gun and he pulled me out and put me in the back of the pickup truck. We got our bill. They had walkie talkies and they referred to each other as Bill. It happened so fast. see me beg, they liked to see me degraded. And if I did not show enough pleasure, he would punish me by spanking or having me repeat different sentences. I love you, Bill. I love you. I love you. He made me repeat, I love you, Bill, a hundred times. Bill. One hundred. You're doing so well. I'm going to keep you around longer than the others. They showed me pictures of other women that they had had previous, and a couple of them were beat up. They were threatening me. If I wasn't good, I'd end up looking like this one. Place just for you right now. Look at this. We're soundproofing, so no one can hear your screams. It's pretty darn good. There was only one window, I think, in the house that did not have bars on the inside. I knew I wasn't gonna get away. They were not gonna let me out alive.
so I can better myself like you said I should. And I'll need to be able to turn the pages. I convinced him to undo one of my hands. able to kind of slip out of the handcuff because I was very skinny. They had a, a rifle like, propped up next to the bed. And so I grabbed that and I was running across the hallway and I heard, get her, get her. And they were almost right behind me. And so I just dove through the glass. Oh, I was hysterical. I was running down the street. I was knocking at people's doors. It's on Monday.